Unit 5 addresses transportation design projects which typically deal with corridors for roads and highways, uh, intersections, road reconstruction projects, interchange design and that sort of thing. The exercises in Lesson 1 allow you teach you how to create an alignment from objects, teach you how to label an alignment, create an alignment using the alignment layout tools, you learn how to edit an alignment. In exercise 5, you learn how to apply super elevation to an alignment. And then in exercise 6, you learn how to create alignment, offset alignments and widenings. In the first two exercises, mimic the steps covered in the alignment section in the third unit of this, which is on land development. So in exercise one you learn how to create an alignment from a polyline. And then in exercise two you learn how to label an alignment using the station labels and the segment labels. These can be learned in more detail or reviewed in more detail if you go back to the third unit's lesson on alignments. In exercise 3, you learn how to create an alignment using commands on the Layout Tools toolbar. And the Layout Tools toolbar offers quite a bit of functionality for creating complex alignment geometry that you may encounter in a typical transportation engineering project. For instance, spirals, compound spirals, reverse curves. So let's have a look. Here we have the starting of an alignment. And if we went to Alignment menu, we can go to the Alignment Creation Tools toolbar. And let's call this 8th Avenue. The alignment style is proposed. And the alignment label set is all labels for now. So what we have in the drawing here are a number of just AutoCAD entities. Now, we could have created from objects, but we're going to go a little bit of a different route here. Uh, on this drop-down menu, you have uh, an option to convert AutoCAD lines and arcs. So if we pick that, on the command line you're prompted to pick the line or arc to convert and we'll just slowly pick these one by one. And that has created an alignment object from those lines and arcs. What I could do now is grip the alignment, right click, display order and send it back and there's the original arcs and lines and I can just pick those again to erase those because we no longer need those lines and arcs. So we can add another curve onto here or a spiral. There's a number of different commands. Perhaps we want to add a tangent. Fix line two points up to here. There's a tangent. This is all part of the same alignment. And now perhaps I'd like to fit a curve between two entities in radius. And then if we pick the incoming tangent and the outgoing tangent, and at the command line, the curve solution angle is less than 180. And we're also being prompted for radius. Let's go with 100 feet. And so there's a 100 foot radius here. And that curve can obviously be edited to increase the size. So a number of different commands in here. The uh, When you go through the actual steps in the lesson, there's commands that show you how to create some more complex geometry with spirals and so forth. In the fourth exercise, you learn how to graphically edit an alignment using grips. Uh, if you were to move the PI, you can see how you can change the position of that PI. You can change the angle of a tangent you can change the size of a curve using grip. So grip editing is a powerful method to edit an alignment. And you can also, on the Alignment Layout Tools toolbar, if it's not visible, you can grip the alignment. You can right-click and select Edit Alignment Geometry. And on the Alignment Layout Tools toolbar, you have the Alignment Grid View. And what this allows you to do is to edit the geometry in the table. So I can now go back and say, well, let's change this to a radius of 300 and you can see how the geometry updates automatically in the drawing. So you can edit the alignment using grips and you can also edit the alignment data in a table.
Furthermore, you can apply design speed to an alignment. So let's have an, another look at a data set here. We'll go to this data set here. And when you create an alignment, you can assign a design speed. So if we were to modify the properties of this alignment, under the design criteria tab you can see that we've assigned a design speed of 40 miles per hour and we've turned on the use of criteria based design and reference a particular design criteria file. Well what's happening here with this exclamation mark it's letting us know that this curve is substandard. So if we grip the alignment and edit the alignment geometry and if we were to look at the data in the grid view here, you can see here where it's letting us know that that curve is substandard based on that table. So right now it's saying that the length of the, the radius of the curve is 500, but from the design table, the min minimum radius is 510. So if we change that value in here to 510, you'll notice that the curve is no longer substandard and that the warning symbol has been removed. So when you create the alignment using the alignment creation tools, you can right away a design, assign a design speed and design criteria to that alignment, or you can assign design speed and design criteria by modifying the alignment properties after you have created the alignment. So you don't need to assign the design speed right away. In exercise five, you learn how to apply super elevation and in order to apply super elevation you need to first assign the design speed to the alignment you need to then calculate the super elevation values and the way this works is that when you create your cross sections your cross section subassemblies read the super elevation values at the specific station locations and here's a diagram that's showing how the super elevation of the edge of pavement left and the edge of pavement right interrelate with the cross sections here. And here's the super elevation table. So let's go through that. We'll open up a drawing here. Exercise 5. And if we modify the properties of the alignment, you'll see that we have a design speed assigned to it. We have a design criteria file assigned and we're using the 6% super elevation table. If we go to the super elevation tab, there's no super elevation parameters assigned yet. You can either insert manual stations or delete stations, but this one here allows you to set the properties from the table. And you have a super elevation region for each curve. Let's just delete the, uh, we won't bother applying super elevation to the first two regions, we'll just do it to the third region and you can see that it's adopted the parameters that we assigned to the alignment. And if we just click OK, you can see now that you've got the super elevation calculated for the first, second, and third regions, which are the individual curves. And these up and down arrows indicate where your run out and run off lengths aren't so are exceeding the available distance given the alignment geometry. But we're going to ignore the first two curve so I'll pick the first station and then pick the last station for the second region and we'll delete those transition stations. So now we have the super elevation for just the third curve and you can see where you've got your description and then the super elevation rates and these can be changed or edited in any any fashion but once again it's the subassemblies that read your super elevation values at any particular station location. So now we have super elevation assigned to that alignment. And this is the result of applying super elevation to al the alignment is having your cross sections read those values. And in the fifth, in the last exercise, you learn how to create offsets and widenings on alignment. And these are really powerful because they will update when you change your alignment center line. So it's a different category of an alignment, the offset alignment. And it's associated with the center line alignment. So let's open the data set and we'll have a look at that. So if we create an offset alignment to 8th Avenue, so 
I can pick the alignment here. Uh, that is your 8th Avenue alignment. If we go to the Create Design panel and Alignment, you can create an offset alignment here. Pick the center line alignment. Here's the alignment that we're offsetting. Here's your naming template for the offset alignments. You can pick a side. So we'll go 12 feet to the left and 12 feet to the right. And if I click OK, you can see two alignments. Now let's remove those labels. We didn't need to have those labels. I'll grip the first one. Edit alignment labels. We'll delete all the labels on that one. Typically you're not labeling these offset alignments. We'll do the same on the other one. Edit alignment labels. And those labels have been removed. Now those offset alignments can be found in Prospector. If I expand alignments, there's your two offset alignments. But what you will note is that when you edit the geometry of the offset alignment, or the center line alignment, you'll notice that the geometry of the offset alignment follows. So this is a very nice way to generate offset geometry from center line geometry that will react with changes to that center line geometry. And in here, if I right click, I can edit the offset parameters. And now here's the offsets, negative 12. Well, maybe on the left side we wanted negative 14. And you can see when you, oops, let's change that, make sure that's correct, negative 14 and that now will update so you can see you've got a 14 foot offset on the left hand side and if I grip the alignment you can see here that it is an offset alignment it's recognizing that as an offset alignment and I get commands that allow me to modify the parameters as I did just now from Prospector or add widenings and here you can see a diagram showing how the offset alignment will vary or will change with adjustments to the center line alignment. And then in the final uh, step, you will add a widening, which can be used to form an acceleration or a deceleration lane uh, with entry and exit tapers. And that concludes the discussion in Unit 5, Transportation, Lesson 1 on alignments.